on this Wednesday night, Ottawa's $107 billion emergency aid package. Who will get it? How much? And when? We know people are anxious. Tougher measures for travelers returning to Canada now ordered, not asked, to self-isolate for two weeks. You have to pretend that you are actually holding the virus. How will the quarantine order be enforced? Proof no one is immune. Everyone is vulnerable. Prince Charles tests positive for COVID-19. What about his mother, the Queen? Plus, deepening despair. Ventilators, ventilators, ventilators. We need 30,000. Desperation as New York City's morgues will soon reach full capacity. Global National with Donna Friesen. Good evening and thanks for joining us. There is relief on the way if you have been laid off or cannot work because of COVID-19. We have some important details tonight about the federal legislation passed in Parliament overnight. It's called the Canada Emergency Response Benefit and it will inject billions into the economy. That includes $2,000 per month for the next four months for workers affected by COVID-19. This virus has killed business, and this emergency aid package, totaling $107 billion, is designed to help individuals and businesses by delivering direct support and tax deferrals. We are working in order to make sure that we have the capacity to protect Canadians, to get ourselves through this, and to come out of this challenge. This is, we expect, a very challenging time, but a temporary time, to come out of this challenge with our economy intact. We know many Canadians need the money now with rent and bills to pay, but the checks aren't going out tomorrow. Mike LeCouture has more on what the government is saying about the timeline. Help is on the way. The government is trying to reassure Canadians who have already missed a paycheck because of the COVID-19 outbreak, releasing the details of the aid package and exactly who it will help. Whether you're full-time, contract or self-employed, this new benefit will be there for you. If you're sick or quarantined, looking after someone sick or at home taking care of your kids, it's there for you. The Canada Emergency Response Benefit also applies to people who have yet to be laid off but aren't getting any income because of this crisis. Now, it covers a lot of people who need money now and that's the biggest problem. Now, the government online portal to apply for these benefits is scheduled to be up and running by April 6th. And the Prime Minister has promised money in your pockets within 10 days of applying for it. Meaning financial help is still three weeks away. But questioned about that delay in a special Senate session, Finance Minister Bill Morneau explained they're doing the best they can. There aren't faster ways to get money in Canadians' hands. That is, in fact, the challenge that we're facing in this particular situation. 1.1 million Canadians have filed for employment insurance since last week, and that number is expected to grow. The Prime Minister says 1,300 civil servants have been brought in to help process all those claims. And to prevent more claims, business groups say the government could have used companies to funnel the money to Canadians and avoid more layoffs. We can avoid that by executing expeditiously with a greater sense of urgency and working collaboratively together with business so that we can keep these employees on a payroll and not have to have them go through a, an arduous uh, EI process, if at all possible. The finance minister admits the systems that will deliver these government services were not built for the type of stress and strain they are about to endure. And that's why the government feels it was so important for Parliament to sit through the night so Canadians can get the benefits as soon as possible. Donna. Mike LeCouture in Ottawa, thank you. Here's how many people are diagnosed with COVID-19 in Canada right now. There are more than 3,300 confirmed cases across the country. More than 30 people have died and the spread of the virus is accelerating. So far today, at least 610 new cases have been reported. Ontario had its biggest daily jump yet, 100 new cases, and that brings the total number in that province to 688. 17 of those people are in intensive care. In Newfoundland and Labrador, the number of cases nearly doubled today. 67 people now have tested positive. 44 of them have been linked to a funeral home in St. John's. It's believed someone with COVID-19 went to the funeral home last week, exposing others to the virus. People across Newfoundland and Labrador are being urged to stay home. The safe thing for you to do now is assume that there is COVID around you and to stay home and stay apart, but stay connected. 
A Canadian member of parliament has COVID-19. Kamal Kara is the first MP to test positive. She is a two-term Liberal MP from Brampton West, Ontario, and a registered nurse. She tweeted, she's experiencing symptoms but is in good spirits. As our chief political correspondent, David Aiken, reports, what's concerning is who she's been in contact with over the last two weeks. It was March 11th when Brampton West MP Kamal Kara met the executive director of the United Nations World Food Program, David Beasley, at a Parliament Hill reception. Then, eight days later, on March 19th, Beasley said he had tested positive for COVID-19 and had been in quarantine for five days. That meant Beasley would have been in self-quarantine on March 14th, three days after the reception in Ottawa. But on March 17th, Kara announced that as a registered nurse, she was volunteering to be on the front line to fight the virus in Brampton. It's not known if Kara did any frontline nursing work then or after Beasley announced his positive test. And she did not respond to inquiries from Global News. Beasley also met with as many as 50 MPs during his official visit to Canada. Some of those MPs have been in self-isolation ever since, though Kara is the only MP so far to have been confirmed positive for COVID-19. And all of this, of course, underlines the risk politicians face and the risk politicians represent because, of course, politics is a social business. And it, like so many other businesses, is now undergoing rapid change. Donna? All right, David Aiken in Ottawa. Thank you. Efforts are still underway to bring home Canadians who are stranded overseas. Flights are starting to arrive from Peru and Ukraine today. More flights are in the works from several other countries in Latin America, North Africa and Europe. Priority is being given to places where there are no or limited flight options and where there is a critical mass of Canadians trying to get out. Many will be coming from places that have outbreaks of COVID-19, like Spain, and there are still regularly scheduled flights coming into Canada from all over the United States. Today, the government toughened its approach to all those returning travellers. It is now mandatory under the Quarantine Act to stay home and self-isolate for 14 days. So there is perfect clarity around the need to isolate when Canadians come back from abroad, whether it's from the USA or other international destinations. We are implementing the Quarantine Act so there is no confusion about the need to do so, whether you are symptomatic or not. Returning travellers with symptoms are warned not to take public transportation and not to self-isolate where there are vulnerable people. When they land, we're told contact information will be taken from symptomatic passengers and others, plus some random checks will be performed. But other than that, it's not clear how the Quarantine Act will be enforced. Mike Drolet reports. Canadians returning from abroad expected extensive testing for COVID-19 symptoms upon landing. When we heard uh, Prime Minister Trudeau speak, we were almost thinking they're going to have like thermal imaging to see if you have a fever or they're going to take your temperature or something at the airports, but none of that. There is nothing. Over the past week, Canadians have been given this single information sheet. A number of travellers interviewed by Global News report the same things. Few masks, fewer questions and almost no social distancing. Well, you know what it is? It's a flying Petri dish and the airports are breeding, very fertile breeding ground for COVID-19. Colette McCaskill and her family went That's into isolation, right. but not everyone has heeded the advice of health officials. So now the federal government says it will use the Quarantine Act to force travelers to isolate. The penalties for contravening the order include a million dollar fine and three years in jail. I think all of us are going to be and feel safer with mandatory quarantine for anyone entering Canada. But how will the Quarantine Act be enforced and will Canadians respect it? We've spoken to several travellers who say they'd do anything to return to Canada, including masking any symptoms they may have. Over a million people were screened for fevers at airports during the SARS crisis with no positive tests. And Canada Border Services is investigating how a 72-year-old woman with COVID symptoms was able to fly undetected into Toronto last weekend, only to die hours later. At this stage, with crisis and the stress and, and everybody wanting to get home, we cannot rely on that honour system. I hate to say it, we're human. And humans sometimes need motivation to do the right thing. Mike Drolet, Global News, Toronto. 
We know no one is immune to this virus, not even a prince. The heir to the British throne, Prince Charles, has tested positive, one of more than 9,000 cases in the UK. He's 71 years old. He's said to be doing well. The worry is not just about him, but all the other people he's interacted with recently, including his mother, the Queen. Crystal Gamansing reports. This is the Prince of Wales avoiding handshakes during one of his most recent public appearances. It was obviously fairly shocking news that Prince Charles uh, tested positive. Um, he's probably one of the most high-profile people in the world who's now got the virus. But the, uh, the good news is that he's supposed to have uh, fairly minor symptoms. His wife Camilla tested negative. The couple is now in isolation in Scotland. It's not known where Prince Charles picked up the virus, but he's been at many events, including one earlier this month with Prince Albert of Monaco, who tested positive on the 12th. The 12th is also the last time Prince Charles saw his mother. The Queen is in good health, according to Buckingham Palace, as is her 98-year-old husband, Prince Philip. The two of them are at Windsor Castle in lockdown, uh, and they're just being... Uh, served by a very small staff of um, close aides, only about uh, seven or eight of them. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson did not see the Queen for their regular meeting. They spoke over the telephone. A lockdown is in place in the UK in an effort to save lives. More than 400 here have already died of the virus. Crystal Gamansen, Global News, London. India is taking a tough approach to enforcing the lockdown in that country, which is in place for 21 days. Police are out in force wearing masks and physically punishing those who are breaking the rules and going out. Roadblocks are in place and all 1.3 billion people except essential workers have been told to stay home. Only about 600 people have tested positive in India, but it's expected that number will spike and hospitals will soon be overwhelmed. Fears COVID-19 could penetrate prisons. Coming up, the drastic plan to prevent inmates from getting infected. Police are patrolling the streets of New York City, the epicenter of the outbreak in the United States. Anyone who has recently been to that city is being asked to self-quarantine for two weeks. And in Washington, lawmakers passed a $2 trillion emergency relief bill. It is the biggest in American history, and it did give the markets a boost. The TSX closed up 568 points today, ending the day at over 13,000. The Dow Jones climbed 495 points to close at just over 21,000. New York State's governor, though, says that bill doesn't give his state nearly enough money to deal with the crisis. Jackson Prosco reports. In New York State, the situation grows worse by the day. The number of confirmed cases is more than 30,000 and rising. New York City morgues are reportedly nearing capacity. Ventilators, ventilators, ventilators. We need 30,000. Medical workers are already reusing masks and conserving the supplies they have. I would be lying if I didn't say there's incredible amounts of stress. In neighboring New Jersey, doctors at one hospital say the 10 ventilators they have simply won't be enough. If the worst is yet to come, as we're expecting, then it won't be. The only good news, restrictive social distancing measures may be working. The rate of hospitalization has slowed slightly. New York City is now preparing to close some of its busiest roads to make more room for pedestrians to space themselves out, as anyone leaving the city is asked to self-quarantine for two weeks. We mandated the isolation of all individuals that fly to Florida uh, from the New York City area. Similar outbreaks are growing in communities across the U.S. Louisiana has seen its numbers surge. Help is on the way. In Washington, urgency has led to a rare show of unity as lawmakers reach a deal on a $2 trillion relief package, one that will include direct payments to Americans and bailouts for businesses big and small. This is not even a stimulus package. It is emergency relief. And late today, the president tweeted that, quote, the media is the dominant force in trying to keep him to get him to keep the country closed in the interests of damaging his prospects at re-election. Donna, that's obviously not true. It's state and local officials who are listening to public health guidance. And those public health officials say half, if not more, of the cases they're seeing of confirmed coronavirus right now are in young people under the age of 50. Yeah, that is deeply worrying. Jackson Prosco in Washington. Thank you. 
There are warnings tonight of a potential disaster across the American prison system because of COVID-19. There are already a number of positive cases among inmates and staff, and overcrowded conditions are fueling the spread of the virus. Several states have already started to release thousands of inmates. Hit when they're down, still ahead. How can Alberta's energy sector survive this? Before this pandemic, Alberta's energy sector was already under the weather, hit by falling oil prices and a lack of pipeline capacity. Today, Canada's finance minister said financial help is coming for the oil and gas industry. I'm not talking about weeks, I'm talking about uh, hours, potentially days, that we can ensure that there's credit facilities for especially the, the small uh, and medium-sized uh, firms in that sector. Right now, the fate of multiple projects in Alberta is uncertain. As Heather Urich's West reports, Alberta's premier says the economic hit will be massive. Chris Mighton has been through downturns in the energy sector before. The bust of 2015 almost cost him everything. Barely back on his feet, last week he was laid off once again. I was uh, notified by phone from my, my direct report that uh, we won't be returning because of the COVID-19. Collectively, companies like Husky, Synovus and Canadian Natural Resources have cut billions in spending following a collapse in oil prices unlike the industry has ever seen. Previous crashes have been serious for the oil and gas industry, but what we're seeing here is unprecedented. We just don't know what's going to be happening. In the mid-80s, Alberta's economy went into recession when the price of West Texas Intermediate hovered just above $11 a barrel, or about $24 in today's terms. 30 years later, in 2015, global oil prices tanked again. Tens of thousands of jobs were lost when prices for a barrel of Western Canada Select fell to around $16 a barrel. At one point last week, that same barrel cost a little more than $5. It's like the same price as a cup of coffee. It's It's... It's incredible. While COVID-19 has sent global demand for oil off a cliff, a spat between Saudi Arabia's OPEC and Russia has also led to the market being oversupplied. Alberta's premier warns these record low prices could get worse. Citibank is projecting that Brent oil could be trading on average as low as $5 in the second quarter of this year, which, which would probably mean that we would be paying people to take uh, Alberta oil off our hands. The federal government says help is coming. Details of a $15 billion aid package are expected to be released this week. While the Alberta government has enlisted the help of former Prime Minister Stephen Harper to help them navigate these uncharted waters. Chris Mighton hopes people like him are not forgotten. As an independent contractor, he isn't even eligible for EI. Just the financial support. Being a contractor is tough. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. Can this coronavirus survive a hot shower? Next, experts answer your questions. Throughout this crisis, we've been trying to ease some of the uncertainty and the confusion you may have and probably have about this pandemic. Many of you have submitted questions through our website, and our Jeff Semple has been putting together some of those questions to the experts. Take a look and a listen across the country. Canada's normally bustling streets are silent. Canadians heeding the call to stay indoors, like Paula Anderson from Grand Prairie. We had come back from a family holiday in Mexico and gone into self-isolation. The end of that period is just coming up this week. We wanted to know if it's safe to get together and hug and kiss our grandchildren. Now is not the time to go and visit your other family members. You know, we understand there has to be some kind of essential things, you know, going to get groceries. Sometimes people have to go to certain types of doctor appointments. But, you know, if you're going to go outside, what we recommend is that you go outside, but you keep yourself away at least two meters from everybody else. Others are in self-isolation because they developed symptoms consistent with COVID-19, like Hillary from Hamilton. But now we're no longer experiencing symptoms, and we were just wondering um, if we did have COVID-19, would we still be contagious? There are some scattered reports of a uh, of virus being detected by molecular testing on people who are several days past, 14 days, several days past discharge from the hospital and were deemed to be recovered. 
One study found that once infected patients develop symptoms, they're contagious for about eight days. Besides social distancing, a lot of viewers are asking how to make sure they don't bring the virus home and are wondering if it might help to turn up the heat. This is Roger in Chilliwack, BC. Uh, I know one common question a lot of people have is temperature. As far as personal hygiene and grooming, uh, taking hot showers and so on. What is the best way to make sure that you're doing your, your part to uh, to be able to sanitize surfaces and yourself? Other viewers are asking about killing the virus with hot water laundry, even a hot tub. The SARS coronavirus can be killed by temperatures of 56 degrees Celsius. But with this coronavirus, um, higher humidity and temperature seem to inhibit it on surfaces. But water at any temperature should do the trick if you just add soap. So if you have soap and water, it's all you have in your house, use that and that'll work. Soap, water, and social distancing are best weapons against an invisible threat. Jeff Semple, Global News, Toronto. Jeff will continue to consult with experts and try to answer your questions. Send them to your questions at globalnews.ca. And on our website, you'll find a special page dedicated entirely to COVID-19. That's at globalnews.ca slash coronavirus. That is Global National for this Wednesday. I'm Donna Friesen. Tonight, we leave you with an outpouring of support from the B.C. legislature. This pink fountain, just a small show of support for all the health care workers putting their lives on the line to save the rest of us. We salute them, too. Thanks for watching and take care of yourselves.